In this lesson, we will look at the various fire extinguishing agents available for use in and on aircraft. We will also discuss the regulations governing both the number and the types of handheld fire extinguishers required on an aeroplane. The type and quantity of extinguishing agent must be suitable for the kinds of fires likely to occur in the compartment where the extinguisher is intended to be used. And for personnel compartments, the hazard of toxic gas concentration must be minimal. Bromochlorodifluoromethane, BCF, is the most commonly used agent. It is also known as Halon 1211. It is stored in signal red, purple, brown or green containers. This agent is very effective against electrical and flammable liquid fires. It is only slightly toxic. It is colourless, non-corrosive and evaporates rapidly leaving no residue. It does not freeze or cause coal burns and will not harm fabrics, metals or other materials it comes into contact with. It acts rapidly on fires by producing a heavy blanketing mist which eliminates air from the fire source but more importantly it interferes chemically with the combustion process. It has outstanding properties in preventing reignition after the fire has been extinguished. Along with Halon 1301, it is widely used in the fixed fire extinguishers, fitted to gas turbine engine power plants and in cargo compartments. It has the advantage that it can be directed as a liquid stream from a handheld fire extinguisher, allowing the user to fight fires from a safe distance. Many of the handheld fire extinguishers in crew and passenger compartments are BCF. Bromotrifluoromethane, BTM, or Halon 1301, is stored in grey containers and used in fixed systems for the protection of auxiliary power units, power plants and cargo compartments. It has similar characteristics to Halon 1211, except that it has a vapour spray which is more difficult to direct. For this reason, it is not normally found in handheld fire extinguishers. BCF and BTM are part of a group of halogenated hydrocarbons, commonly called Freon. There are other extinguishing agents in the Freon group, but only BCF and BTM extinguishers are recommended for use on aircraft. Water, or water glycol, is stored in red or grey containers and is used in handheld portable appliances. The only purpose of the glycol is to stop the water freezing at low temperatures. It can be used in passenger cabins for combating fires involving domestic materials. It must not be used on fires which involve electrical equipment or liquids, nor should it be applied to hot brakes. The glycol is an antifreeze agent, which permits operation of the extinguishers at temperatures as low as minus 20 degrees Celsius. Dry chemical or dry powder extinguishant is stored in a blue or red container with a blue label. The use of this agent in crew compartments or any other compartment not separated by a partition from the flight deck of large aircraft is not permitted. However, some light aircraft may carry dry powder extinguishers and their use should be avoided if at all possible as visibility will be restricted and the powder can render otherwise serviceable electrical equipment inoperative. The agent is a non-toxic powder, usually potassium bicarbonate, which is similar to talcum powder. 
it is very effective against fires involving liquids, wood, fabric and paper. It should not be used on electrical fires as it will cause damage to any otherwise serviceable electrical equipment. Dry powder is best known for its application against wheel and brake fires on the ground. As a powder, it has no cooling effect, and this reduces the danger of wheel explosions or the distortion of the brakes and wheels. In addition to the dry powder extinguisher, foam, water, carbon dioxide, BCF and sand are available for use by personnel on the ground for extinguishing aircraft fires. Carbon dioxide is stored in black or red containers with a black label. It is non-corrosive and extinguishes fire by dissipating the oxygen in the immediate area. From a standpoint of toxicity and corrosion, it is the safest agent to use and for many years it was the most widely used. If handled improperly, it can cause mental confusion and suffocation. For this reason, the EASA regulations state that no more than five pounds of carbon dioxide may be discharged into any fuselage compartment, so it is not normally used inside aircraft. Carbon dioxide may be used against most types of fire and is particularly useful against engine fires as it will extinguish the fire without damaging the engine. This agent may be used as a substitute for dry powder against wheel and brake fires. However, it should not be sprayed directly onto the wheel but alongside, to blanket the wheel with a carbon dioxide cloud. Foam is the principal extinguishant for use on flammable liquid fires, including liquid butane and propane. It blankets the flames by excluding oxygen. Sand is useful for containing metal fires, such as those involving magnesium or titanium, where liquids will make matters worse. The EASA regulations state that the number of handheld fire extinguishers required in the passenger compartment will be governed by the maximum approved passenger seating configuration in the compartment. The table on the screen shows the requirements. They need to be memorised. There are two things worth remembering about this table. Firstly, the requirement relates to the maximum approved passenger seating configuration, not the number of passengers being carried. So for instance, an aircraft with a maximum approved passenger configuration of 200 must have three fire extinguishers in the passenger compartment, even if there are only 50 passengers on board. Secondly, this requirement does not include handheld fire extinguishers that may be required in other compartments. At least one of the required fire extinguishers, located in the passenger compartment of an aeroplane with a maximum approved passenger seating configuration of at least 31 and not more than 60, and at least two of the fire extinguishers, located in the passenger compartment of an aeroplane with a maximum approved passenger seating configuration of 61 or more, must contain BCF or an approved equivalent as the extinguishing agent. In addition to these requirements, there must also be at least one BCF hand extinguisher conveniently located on the flight deck for use by the flight crew. To make sure you understand, try this. If an aeroplane has a maximum approved passenger seating configuration of 201, but is only carrying 200 passengers, how many handheld fire extinguishers must be on the aeroplane? And how many of them must be BCF?
Well done. Just to confirm it, here is the table which shows we need four handheld extinguishers for the passenger compartment, two of which must be BCF, plus one BCF for the flight deck. In this lesson, you have learned that there are various extinguishers available for different types of fire. Bear in mind that you need to memorize the table of handheld fire extinguisher requirements.